All right, all right. Peace, family, peace. See, I got the living legend with me. Professor James Smalls, family. Professor James Smalls is in the building. Make sure you tell your friends, your families, your loved ones, people who you care about. So we're going to do a lot of learning tonight. This man has wisdom right here, and it's an honor to have him on the show. I'm going to get to a few ads. <coughs> Pardon me. And then we're going to... Um, then we're going to start, all right, family? All right, let me see. I see y'all in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, three nights in a row. Yeah, I did a show three nights in a row. Wow. I told y'all when my son get a little older, I was going to pick it back up. And uh, 2022, you know, we got to, you know, it's, it's that type of year. You know, we got to be, we got to pick up the pace with, with whatever we're doing, what our desires and our wants and our needs and the things we love to do, so... Yeah, let's all inspire each other to pick up the pace. All right, fam, keep it on a high frequency. All right, let me, um, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to King Simon, one of the best when it comes to numerology. You see his number right there, texting me full name and date of birth to get a consultation. He also has an introductory course on Udemy.com. You go to that website, Udemy.com. All right, family? And also, last but not least, make sure you go to the website, Black Magic university.com i got all the past workshops up there financial esoteric educational they're all up there family blackmagicuniversity.com welcome back brother how you doing i'm good sir how you been everything everything's good well you know i'm, I'm kind of tired of new york uh you know i'm i'm I pl i'm planning on leaving new york soon but um other than that i'm fine man with the whole you know, I don't want, we can't say certain words, you know, with the whole, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Because YouTube be on some bullshit with that. But um, New York, ever since that, you know, I just knew the whole vibe in New York is just completely off to me. So um, I'm looking forward to eventually leaving New York, you know, I think it's that time. Well, that's your spirit giving you instructions. You got to listen. Mm -hmm. Let's get this thing started, Professor. We in 2022. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hear about all the fancy weaponry the white man has, who we call the white man, or you know, whatever name you want to give him. Uh, and we, a lot of people feel helpless at this point in the game. Um, a lot of individuals say the only thing we have left is our magic. So I want to have an in-depth conversation about our magic, our African magic um our black magic whatever the different terms we call it but how it could be effective in today's age and today 2022 and beyond and how can we utilize it so before we go there let's take it back a little bit um what would you define professor james smalls as african magic or or african spirituality what, what would you define that as my brother African sacred science. We don't have magic. Sacred science. Yes, sir. And we don't have spirituality. Those are really two really white things. Those are white terms, you're saying? Euro European mm. things. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a sacred science. And, mm. and the sacred means that's the highest level of science there is. Mm -hmm. And the science means your knowledge and understanding of the universe, nature, and yourself. So that's the mother, father, child that they play mm -hmm. with, Mary, Jesus, and Joseph, um, Asar, Aset, and Haru. Mm -hmm. Nature, it's the cosmology, what we call the heavens, mm -hmm. and you, the child, the human being. That's mm -hmm. the three things that all of the discussions have always been about. How do you create harmony in that world? Um, the white man beat us up when he had nothing but some swords. So it ain't about mm. his weapons. It wasn't his weapons that won. Mm. You know, it was our being envy and jealous of something that we didn't have. <laughs> and when we tried to get it, we found that it wasn't worth having except putting the chain around your wrist and throwing your butt on a ship mm. or selling you in the Indian Ocean or across the desert into Europe as the Arab Muslims were doing before the white Christian. Mm. Our problem is our ignorance of our history, brother. 
Say that again. Our problem is what? Our ignorance mm -hmm. of our history. Mm -hmm. Only history could erase the European. I don't want to even call him white because white is something good. And he's not really white. Mm -hmm. He's never seen a white person. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about the European or the Eurasians. They're both the same. Mm -hmm. um, we have to realize that it is our ignorance that's got us in the situation we are in. This year, I think we spent close to $2 trillion. With whom? The European, we said, have done us all the time and we hate. The Asians, we said, is exploiting us and we hate. The Arabs, we say, are exploiting us and we hate. We've spent most of our money with those three communities. One is controlling much of the the grocery stores in the African-American community across the continent of North America. One is controlling the laundry mats, small restaurants with the ethnic foods and dry cleaners across the continent of North America and the black community. Um, one is producing all kinds of cheap products and dumping in our community, which we are buying from, I guess you call the five and 10 cent stores, whatever. But at the end of the day, <laughs> We spend something like 90% of nearly one and a half trillion dollars with the people who we say hate us and who we say we don't trust. And why should we? We've got a history of crimes against humanity practiced against us by those communities for centuries. Um, we've got exploitation and genocide practice against us by those communities for centuries. We said we want to be not the victim of these communities anymore, but we give them all the wealth they need to keep us oppressed. You know, how can any people, we are about 60 million strong in North America. We have a spending power of nearly $2 trillion. So why are we in poverty? Why is there any poverty anywhere? Right now in New York City, we have a, a mayor who's black, a police commissioner who's black, a district attorney who's black, assistant district attorney who's black, city council president who's black, public advocate who's black, three bar president who's black, head of the state assembly is black, the head of the state senate is black, why are we still having the same issues? They said, oh, if you vote us in office, put some of us black folks in there, everything's gonna change. Well, we've got thousands upon thousands of black folks in office since the voting rights was passed. What has changed? Okay. Because mm -hmm. ignorance, most of the black elected official a fundamentally ignorant, basic African-American history and almost totally ignorant of African history, which is our mother, father, historical and cultural experiences. So we like to think that um, we're intelligent, but intelligent people have a body of knowledge that can give them a guidance. And the most intelligent people follow the body of knowledge that is the history of their ancestors. The Chinese community right now is celebrating Chinese New Year, all right? Mm -hmm. And they have declared it to be the year of the tiger. They're celebrating a holiday that their great ancestors start, started. And in that holiday, whether it's a week or month, how long they run it, it informs and instructs them of who they are mm -hmm. and who they should be. If you look at the Jewish community and look at any calendar, the Jewish community have more holidays than any other ethnic group yeah, in America. Yeah, they, got, yeah, they do, they do. And they're one of the most powerful groups in America because each of those holiday represents a, a, a um, how Dr. Ben used to say, a deification of an aspect of their history. You know, on certain occasions, they commemorate that and celebrate that, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I forgot which one it is. The last one that was just celebrated was a celebration of how they rose up 
under the leadership of a family called the Maccabees to destroy the Greek descendants, the Hellenistics, who was keeping them under oppression in Northeast Africa, which they now call the Middle East. But it's been, it was Northeast Africa then, it's Northeast Africa now. Mm. They have another one that you call, um, well, where, where in Poland, as we were coming up to the Second World War, Kristallnacht where the Nazis went around and broke all the glasses in the windows of the Jewish business in that um, city or country. And so they celebrate that to commemorate something that happened in history that they won't ever let happen again. Mm, okay. And okay. so we don't understand it. We think history is just remembering the past with not understanding the relationship, you know? History gets rid of the mystery. Mm -hmm. so if you don't know your history, you're clouded in European and Asiatic mystery about who you are mm -hmm. and what you are and what you've accomplished. And by studying that, what you will be capable of accomplishing again. Mm -hmm. But it's like a lot of the brothers and sisters who, <clears throat> and people can make whatever decision they want around being vaccinated or not vaccinated. But when I hear some of the arguments of why you shouldn't get vaccinated, it shows that those people little very, know very little about history. Since Africans invented vaccination, um, since we invented um, a number of the, 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 the solutions to viral infections that we are fighting right now. And we haven't any knowledge of this. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't have knowledge of the medical books in ancient Kemet. Most black people don't realize that the people of ancient Egypt were all blacks. You know, they came in every shade, just like we are. We are brown skin, and we have people in our family. I have a brother almost the color of my shirt, two of them. Mm -hmm. and one in between that and then me at the lightest end. Um, that's the way Africans always look because the black can create any color in the spectrum, including the white. And that's what we did genetically over time, according to paleontology, anthropology and archeology, span we can prove this without, and everybody knows this now, except most black people don't know that Egypt was a black civilization, an ancient African civilization. And most of the knowledge that the West is using today they picked it up in Egypt. They haven't improved on much of it except to create killing machines. You know? And so when you don't understand your history, then everything else you're working on is mystery. So you don't have no magic. So you, you can't have magic unless you know who you are. Mm -hmm. You can't make magic unless you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If we had magic, why would we stay in slavery in America for 200 and something years? Mm. Or in the Caribbean for 400 years? Where was the magic? We hit it under a rock someplace? Mm. The magic is functioning in your reality based on your knowledge of the past. If you don't have a knowledge of the past, how can you analyze your presence to create a future based on your understanding of cause and effects and the errors that you've made before now. So ignorance is the black man's worst problem. Ignorance of self, ignorance of the history of his mother and father, his grandparents, his great parents, and his great, great, great parents. Because if you weren't ignorant of that, you would solve the problems of economic politics. And some people try to separate spirituality from reality. Spirituality is your reality. Your reality is your spirituality. But if you don't have African sacred science and you're working in somebody else's spirituality and his spirituality relegates you to the slave, then you're going to always be a slave. You got to have your own science, your own system, which is really your memory. What is your memory of who you were before this time? You know, what is your memory? And one of the problem is we don't have a memory. You know? We don't have a memory. And so some of us do. Now, you know, we're close to Africans. We are nearly 2 billion people. 
in the world, if not more. You know. So if you got two billion people that have lost their memory, meaning they don't know their history, don't know their culture, don't know their sacred science, okay? don't know their rituals, you know, don't have an understanding of why they make music or why they do dance. Don't have an understanding of why they're educated and what they should educate. Don't understand, have an understanding that they created mathematics and why they created it. Don't understand why we created medicine or develop it to the level we had developed it as far back as Kemet, Egypt. If you don't have this understanding, then you walk around thinking you're the nobody that got nothing. And people treat you like the nobody that got nothing. And then the nobody that got nothing treat themselves like nobody that got nothing. And then you do what the nobodies that got nothing black, mostly males, did in 2020. We will kill 8,635 other black people with guns in the streets of America. And it's time to talk about manhood and I'm the conscious community. You're playing with yourself and you don't even have a bathroom so to protect you from the world who's laughing at you. Mm. No group killed that many of their own people, their women walking down the street from work, their babies in strollers, their brothers or sisters sitting innocently in a car, and then want to proclaim something called manhood. Hmm. That's a slave. That's an ignorant, backwards, misinformed, uninformed slave. Now, I don't blame them for being having a shattered personality you know, in a broken identity. That's what oppression does. But I still have to hold them responsible for the damage they do to our community. I understand how you got sick, but knowledge will help you get better. And we who are not as sick as you are, are trying to help you get better. And if you persist that you're going to keep killing our people, then maybe it's better to kill all of y'all and get a clean slate and then start all over again. But another generation because you can't keep killing hundreds and hundreds of your people every month and then cry oppression because you haven't killed any of the people who say oppress you so there's something wrong with your mind what's wrong with your mind is the ignorance of history that will allow you to make decisions that can build a better future than the presence you find yourself in. And people don't call that spirituality. They want to call it spirituality. They want to come with some mythical thing. Something's going to float out of the sky. Or if you smoke the right, the right um, piece of grass, something's going to change in your mind. Um, it didn't save Bob Marley's life. He smoked a lot of ganja, but he got cancer like everybody else and he died. Didn't save Peter Tosh's life. You know? So that can't be an answer because those were godlike. So everybody life. else, and he died. What an extraordinary. St. Peter Tosh's life. So that can't be an answer because those were godlike. So everybody life. else, and he died. Yeah. Extraordinary. Oh, that's my. Yeah, I didn't even realize it. My fault. So that can't. So that can't. Yeah, my fault. Go ahead, brother. That was so my fault. If we come down to really looking at African sacred science, what we call on this side spirituality then you're looking at the human being's relationship to the earth, meaning using the plants, the fish, the birds, and the animals so you can stay healthy, but don't injure, deplete, or destroy them to such a degree that nature becomes unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Having a knowledge and understanding of the stars and the moons and the constellations and the sun, when the sun is here, the moon is here, this constellation is here, and I'm here, certain things is going on in my body. So you make that line up, you make that relationship. When we talk about um, Brother King Simon, when he's doing numerology, he's talking about how the stars are lined up in relationship to your birthday, mm -hmm. in relationship to where the sun is, in relationship mm -hmm. to where the planets are. That's what spirituality is about. It's about having a knowledge of cosmology, having a knowledge of ecology, having a knowledge of how the human body works and having a knowledge of the relationship between the human body 
and the 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 cosmology and the ecology. And so we form them into science. You know, some of the sciences are called voodoo, some we call the Yoruba, some we call Akan and ancient Kemet. We call it um Netchers. What is the Netcher? You know, what is what is the Orisha? What is the Abosum in Ghana with the Akan? What what is, what is the Loas in Haiti? All of those things, they're not gods or people that look like the drawing we make. These are scientific concepts of how nature works and how cosmology works and how we should learn and understand it and work with it mm -hmm. in order to bring about a universal harmony. The Haitian Revolution, which was won and lost in the 1700s, early 1800s. Yes, we won. We defeated the French. We defeated the Spanish, we defeated the English, and we defeated the Americans who was financing them, four of the mightiest nations on earth. And then we lost it because some confused backwards mulattoes who had white fathers decided to kill Dessaline mm. and give the revolution victory back to the French and the Catholic Church. Mm. I'm talking about Pétion, Pétion, Boyer, and others. So we won the revolution, but the ignorant murdered the revolutionary hmm. and gave the victory of the revolution back to the enemy. So if you don't understand that part of the struggle and you just keep talking about how we, we won the revolution, but yet our people in Haiti is living in the condition they're living, then you miss the point because you don't know history. So you're stuck in the white man's mystery. Hmm. Now, how do we use the sacred science, the knowledge? You know, you, know, you ever seen the, what they call the bebes? Yeah. In Haiti, yeah. drawings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are they? They're our ancestors' conception of cosmological energy manifestation, right? That this type of energy responds to this type of thinking. And this type of energy responds to this type of action on the positive. And then they draw a configuration that represent that body of energy. And that there's certain things you can do to evoke that energy, to evoke Ezele Dante, to evoke Papa Legba, to evoke so you, Ezele Frida. You're talking about this, right, Professor? Yeah, that's called a bebe. Yeah. That's one, one of those symbols they use to represent a certain organization of cosmic energy mm. that we are communicating with mm -hmm. and that can be embedded in us as well as in the environment around us mm -hmm. but when you forget the knowledge of how to do that then you can have that symbol and still suffer because of your ignorance of what the symbol represents and how to actively have a functional relationship with the body of energy that it represents. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And so definitely. the same thing when you look at um, the Yorubas. The Yoruba have a symbol of a man. Most of the times he got a sledgehammer or a sword and they call him Ogun. And they say Ogun is the god of iron god of war so what does that mean right in order to get iron to make a sword or to make hoes to work the field you've got to take some rocks that's full of all kinds of contaminants and then you have to put it in fire and you burn out the impurities and you come up with a piece of metal called steel Mm -hmm. that you can use to make tools, instruments of war, um, any number of things, things to cook in, things to build your houses. This, this is um, Ogun? Is this a represent? Right. Okay. It's, but what he really represents is transformation. When you take that piece of rock and you put it in the fire and you... Oh come up with the steel, you've transformed that rock by burning out the impurities, 
you're left now with a usable um, element that you can make weapons out of, that you can make tools out of, that you can make cooking implements out of. So what he did is to transform the rock into the steel. So he's symbolic of transformation. Mm. And just as he's symbolic of transformation with that element, he's symbolic of transformation in your own character and personality, how you can restructure yourself ethically, morally, and principally to be a better human being, to make it a better world. You know, how you can transform your society with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so mm -hmm. that it's a better society for those who are coming tomorrow than it was for today. And so he symbolized as a strong man with the tools made out of steel at his disposal. You see the hammer down there for building. You see mm -hmm. the sword in his hands for fighting. But the concept is about transformation. Mm -hmm. How do you transform yourself from a weak person to a strong person? How do you transform yourself from a farmer and a builder to a warrior to defend your community? And the steel is so representative of that because you start out with a rock that's all dusty, dirty, and full of stuff, and you burn those things out of it, then you got this one piece that you can use to change the world called steel. So when we talk about spirituality, we're talking about reality. You see? That's why I call it African sacred science. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's a sacred science. Have you ever seen Mary, Jesus, and Joseph? You know, the father, the son, and, and, and the child. You've seen it in all kinds of carving all over the world. But nobody ever explains to you that's the human, a symbol of the human family, which is the true symbol of God. Mother, mother, father, and child. That's right. That's a family. Yeah. And unless you can create that triad, everything dies. You can't have two men together that can't produce a child and think anything will <clears> live <throat> that generation, or two women together and think anything will live back past that generation. You have the two opposite sex reproducing themselves. Mm. That's who you produce. You and your wife, when you had that beautiful baby I saw, Y'all recreated yourself. Mm -hmm. That child is you. Mm -hmm. When your mother and father gave birth to you, they recreated themselves mm -hmm. as you. You see, when a woman gives birth to a child, she's the creator. Children don't fall out of the sky. They don't grow in a field. No stork dropped them off at your door at night. Children comes from the womb of a woman after a relationship with a man where a seed and an egg find unity. And that unity contains everything of both parties so that they can recreate themselves as one. Which makes the woman that aspect of God that creates. That's the only way human beings are created. Mm -hmm. You see? So when we talk about God being the creator, the only way God can create is in that woman's womb. And the only way God can do that is with that man's sperm having gone through the vagina and find unity with the egg released by the fallopian tube. Mm -hmm. So that, that function is the function of creation itself. Mm -hmm. But somebody has misled us to look up to the sky for some mythical guy hanging down his hands doing something. That's, that's fantasy. That's, that's fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Comic book stuff. Reality is the reality. If you don't understand that spirituality is reality, then you stay in the stupor of ignorance, constantly being oppressed by those who are feeding you the fantasy to keep you off course from understanding how to live in reality and recreate it to be a greater environment than the environment you found when you came into the world. That's sacred science. Mm -hmm. you know? We talk about love, and then the culture we are in have reduced love to sex. So they call having intercourse, making love. That's not making love. Love isn't made by having an intercourse. 
because people do that in many instances they don't even care about one another just looking for the sensation and the high that comes from having an orgasm that's not love okay. love is a commitment to a partnership based on a knowledge and an understanding of one another and the belief that you can work together to better the world you know and you take that responsibility and you take an oath to that responsibility mm -hmm. you know, it isn't just the energy you feel because you could be married and walk by a beautiful woman and get stimulated like nobody's business but you got to have discipline and control to know i've already made a commitment to that mm -hmm. type of partnership mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad I can still feel. I know I'm still alive, but I can have a partnership already. And so when we think of spirituality, yeah, we have the beautiful rituals, but rituals is a way of teaching the spiritual and sacred science and not the sacred science of spirituality itself. Dancing is a tool of culture that is used as a tool in the sacred science that we call spirituality. But it is not culture. Dancing is a tool of culture. You know? Culture is the fundamental education system that a people put together to keep reinventing themselves. And it's the knowledge of culture that keeps the people from being genocide. If you're ignorant, anybody could commit genocide against you, like what's happening to us. Any old body could roll up in our community, but open a store and feed us rotten food and pass, sell us dope and do all kinds of things, you know? And we fall for it because we don't have a culture that we recognize as common to us and have it intact so it can protect us from the parasites, you know, and the predators that come into our environments. So when we think of spirituality, we won't make it spookality. We really see it as sacred science. But we get off into spookality and mysteries because you can't solve a mystery for the most part. So you like you if you got these mysteries going on, you're not responsible then for solving the problems of food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security. The biggest spiritual thing you can do is to provide food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security for yourself and your family. Stop doing that and see what kind of world you're going to be in with all your spirituality. And it's amazing as we walk through the world, especially here in North America, I see so many of our people who we say priests and priestesses, and they're as much in poverty as the people they're supposed to help. Mm. You know, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I have somebody come and says, I'm going to show you how to heal cancer but he's got cancer all over his body and can't do nothing about it. You can't help me fight my cancer. I'm, I'm going to go find somebody who's either healed themselves or know how to heal cancer. But you can't come with a cancer riddle body and say, I'm going to teach you how to heal cancer. Mm -hmm. But we fall for that because we become clones of the people who defeated us militarily, the Eurasians, and brought us to this new environment, which was new. There were African peoples in the Americas long before the transatlantic slave trade. There were African peoples in the Americas long before the so-called Native American or the Mongolian Asiatics came over here 10,000 years ago. They found us here. The reason they're no longer yellow and we call them red because of their merger with the black. But that's what black and yellow creates, the ruddy, the red. So people need to get down to the get down and start dealing with what's real. Stop lying to themselves for the sake of fitting in to somebody else's narrative about history, which was meant to ever be true. And let's create our own narrative based on the knowledge and understanding we have from having the knowledge of the history of our ancestors at hand for us to use and to analyze and to recreate the path to economic politics and culture that we control land, labor, and the resources where we live. Because freedom, as Dr. Asa Hilliard said, is being shackled to your identity. Your identity is your history. 
<clears throat> and the science of how to recreate the best of that, this stuff we did in history, we don't want to never do again. Throw that in the garbage. But there's stuff we did in history that we need to use right now to reconstruct the family, reconstruct the neighborhood, reconstruct the community, and reconstruct the nation. Mm -hmm. Based on certain ethical and moral principles that governs our character that allow us to create a harmony that will allow us to build and share the wealth that we are reaping from the environment we live in. And so we build institutions like what they call churches or mosques or temples so that we can practice and replicate the things our ancestors did that made them successful. That's all they are. We can go to worship. You can go to going in and have a history. What do you think the Bible is? They claim it's a history. So why would you go and repeat that same history over and over every week? The Torah. Why would they go and repeat that same history over and over every week? The Quran. They go and recite the same history over and over every week. Why do you think they do that? So they can have a methodology that led them to the victory and the control they now have over the world. Where's your methodology? If you're ignorant of your ancestors' history, development, and success, how are you going to have a methodology to defeat the parasites and exploiters that are treating you like the sacrifice of the universe? If the only methodology you have is theirs, and their methodology puts you on the bottom, there you will stay. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm using his history and I'm using his culture, his history, his culture, his politics, his philosophy, his worldview puts me at the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter who using it. When I'm using it, I'm putting myself at the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. And I want myself to be kept there while they enjoy the wealth of the planet. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about spirituality, remember we're talking about reality. Mm -hmm. so we create certain rituals to help teach that to us. We create dance and celebration and holidays to enforce a body of knowledge and an understanding of a successful past. It all kinds of tools that we use in the present to build a successful future. But if you don't have a knowledge of that past, whose future are you building? If you only have a knowledge of your enemy's past. Mm -hmm. But people don't want the reality that I'm talking. They want to be, have their bl self blindfolded and stay in mystery and darkness, and imagining about God and other things, and then call that spirit. Oh, I had a feeling. I woke up the other night and when I found myself, I done walked out the door and I was down the street someplace, and there was a vibration on the corner. Well, you just were sleepwalking. You need to go see a doctor. Okay. But if you're talking about spirituality as reality, the only thing you know about God was written and told by men and women. So only one body of knowledge about any God in any culture, and I'll show you the man or woman in their history who wrote it. So let's stop playing. The airway people of West Africa had a word for God they had multiple words because words are really can be attributes, names are attributes describing a certain quality of a thing. But the main name was the totality of creation itself. So great Lisa, that what we're calling God is the totality of creation. And we are nothing more than an expression of an aspect of that totality. Or an expression of an essence of an aspect of that totality. And in a sense, not the same nation is right when they say we are God. But we think they just made up something. And hopefully they understand what they're saying. You know, I don't know if they always manifest that with what I've seen. But certainly their teacher gave them a very important clue the reality. Because if God is omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent, and supreme, there's no room for anything else to exist except it. Mm -hmm. 
Everything else exists. It has to exist as an aspect of it. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. But you give that some real deep thought. It's like a man and a woman. I'm in love. You, know, you see a sister, she sees a brother, and something pulls you together. Yeah, that, that type of electricity is really there. That type of attraction is really there. That type of energy is really there. But you have to have a knowledge to, to, to manage it, you know? And when you understand, okay, what is it that drew us together? It is that aspect of the divine that's in her that recognize a similar aspect of the divine in him and vice versa. So based on that feeling that you get hit with the minute you look at that person, you want to get closer to them and get to know them. But if you're in a culture that says the first thing you do is lay on the back and have sex with her and probably get her pregnant before you even get to know her last name, then you've destroyed the relationship's possibility before you even get started. You know, and you've now caused hurt in the family, disruption in the family, disruption in the young lady's life, disruption in your life. When a policy, a cultural policy of how to approach one another, how to learn how to know one another, how to learn how to respect one another, revere one another, before you ever violate one another. Because if you have mating with the opposite sex, you don't know them, don't know their family, don't understand them, they don't know you or your family, that's called violation. Both of you are violating one another for the sake of a feeling which you can get from smoking a cigarette or drinking a glass of wine. Well, it's a little better than that, but you know, kind of know what I mean. So let's talk about real spirituality. Spirituality is when I align myself with the energy in the earth and the plants and the animals in the earth. And then also align myself with the energy in the universe through a knowledge of an understanding of stars and their movement, a knowledge and understanding of constellation and their movement, a knowledge and understanding of planets and their movement, what we call astronomy. The Africans who created astronomy through that study then those scientists then created astrology so they could explain astronomy to the masses. The masses are not done to be looking up in a damn sky all night. They were busy fishing, planting, making boats, you know, harvesting crops, um, making clothing and all the other things, you know, building homes. So they don't have time to do that. So those persons who they entrusted that to, those scientists who we call astronomers, they said, okay, we got the knowledge now. How do we give it to our people? So you create astro astrology to explain the complexities of astronomy and its relationship to the people. You understand it? So basically what astronomy does is tell you what I just said, what your relationship is. Right, right, right. So you didn't have to do all that work. Somebody else spent thousands and thousands of years, these scientists, figuring that out. And then they figured out how the way, how can we give this to the masses? So they first can understand they got a relationship to the planets, they got a relationship to the sun, they got a relationship to the moon, they have a relationship to the stars. There's a cycle in all of that, and it's repetitive. So they created the science of astrology to explain the science of astronomy to the masses. All that is a part of your spiritual or sacred science system. You know, they had to learn how to measure. And the Nile River, which is we take a lot of our knowledge from the civilization that grew up there, you know, it once a year, it brought all that nice black soil from southern part of Africa and dumped it. You could grow anything in it. But now you had to come up with a way to make sure I'm not taking your plants and you're not taking mine. So we had to come up with a way to measure land. So here's your piece of land, Brother Rich. There's your piece of land, Brother Small. And that science of measuring and parlaying out is called geometry. Somebody decided to call it geometry. 
And, so, and it goes on and on. All of the mathematics and science that we know is a part of your spiritual system. Because it's a part of how you gain an understanding of the world and how you design what your relationship to the world is going to be. Yes, it involves a lot of feelings. Yes, it involves a lot of um, anticipation. Yes, you're going to have intuitive, because what we call intuitive is the universe inside of you trying to explain to you how to express yourself outside of you. So you say, oh, that was my intuition. That's how I got to know that. But so how do you know that, Brother Rich? Man, that was pure intuition. Yeah, because the knowledge of the universe is already inside of you because you are the universe. You are a replica of the universe. You are a replica of nature. When you get hungry, you don't go in the kitchen and chop up a human being and make some human steaks and go eat it to replenish the dead cells, do you? You can eat anything else out of nature you want to eat. Animal, fish, bird, plants, roots. So you are everything in nature makes you up. So when you spend a day and you lose thousands and thousands of cells by working and doing all the things you do, you have to replace that with a diet. And so you go and eat everything else out of nature. All of them give you a certain type of energy to replace the certain type of energy that you use already. So are you not nature? The light and the energy that comes from the sun and the moon and the planets and, and, and stars millions of light years away is absorbed by you on a daily basis. Then are you not the universe? Now, what we call spirituality is how we understand that science arrangement between the three. Cosmology, ecology, and the human being. Some people call it religion. I tend to call it sacred science. Religion is too confining and too restrictive. The Africans don't have a holy book. What book can you write that can hold the knowledge of the universe? What book? Tell me. 10 million pages, 2 million pages. How many pages does it have to be to contain that body of knowledge? You ever seen The Last Supper? I think I told you about this one before, right? The Last Supper of Christ sitting there, Jesus the Christ sitting with a halo around his head, meaning light emanating from his head, with 12 people, six on this side of him and six on this side of him. And people be going around crying, oh, he's having the Last Supper, and they're going to kill the Lord right after this. Because they don't see what they see. They look right at it and don't see what they see because they're busy seeing what someone else told them to see. That story is a story of cosmology and ecology. They're eating bread. Bread represents what? Nature, right? He's, he's the guy who's in the boss. He's sitting in the middle of everybody and a halo around his head like the sun. He's Ra. He's the light of the universe the knowledge that make everything happen, right? So he's the sun. And evolving around the sun is the 12 months of the 12 disciples. And if you look at the picture well, you see that each group of six, the six on this side, six on that side, each of them are divided into a group of threes, only talking to one another in that set of threes. So what you have is the four seasons and the 12 months evolving around the sun. So that last supper picture, that's a solar drama story being told. And um, what's the word you use? Um, when you don't want people to see something as if those who know the something they're seeing, you know? So it's hidden, right? What, a cult? A cult? No. 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 Es esoteric? No, no, not, it'll come to me. Okay. But hey, you got it right there. How many people ever saw? I know 90% of the people that heard what I just said never saw the 12 months evolving around the sun. You know, they never saw the four seasons evolving in the 12 months. They never saw the light from the head of Christ being 
the light of the sun. And if you close down that sun, we got up in our sky, everything on the earth die. So you can call them whatever you want to. Ra, Ray, Allah, Jesus, Jehovah, take away the sun and it's a wrap. So the Africans are smart to use the sun as the symbol of God, not a cross. That's the symbol of death. Not a single star, the dog star, which is serious B, that the Jews use. They use the sun. They give life to all of that. And so there's a story of the solar drama being called The Last Supper, and we can't see it because somebody told us it's the last summer supper. So we don't see the 12 dudes. We don't see the groups of threes. Um, that makes up the four seasons. And we don't see the light emanating out of his head as well as the wisdom being given to the world or the health of the world being watered by the light of the sun. So we, we turn it into a mythology that just don't make no sense because somebody told us to see it that way. Or like they said, Jesus rose in three days. He did die on Friday late in the afternoon and you rise on Sunday early in the morning. That sounds like two days to me, at best. So what's up with the three-day thing? And then after he's been killed, it's, oh, they killed him on the cross. Well, in the very few chapters following that, he's meeting with a guy named Thomas and the rest of his disciples who don't believe that's him. And then he says, stick your hand in the hole. So it had to be, he had to be a physically living being. He's going to stick your hand in the holes where the nails made. And you see, this is really me. But we missed that because somebody told us to see something else. So he was saying, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. Somehow I escaped that attempt to kill me. Even if it's a metaphor, in the metaphor, they show him escaping death. If it's real, then they show him escaping death. And maybe he never died at all. Maybe that was uh, like, you know, when he said I thirst and they gave him the gall and vinegar to drink, maybe that gall is the Hebrew word for pure poppy juice and vinegar was fermented apple juice and he was just high, you know, to a point his body functions slow down such that you couldn't even detect light. You know, that happens with kids who drown, you know, in frozen ponds. And once they get them out of the pond and warm them up, the child wakes up. Well, any human being. So there's just a lot we don't understand. That's why we got to look at it very scientifically. Because certainly, if religions and gods and stuff have been what we are told it is, then how in the world do they rationalize and justify what has happened to the Africans? Who are the the people who worship gods more than anybody else on the planet Earth on any given day. So either your God ain't working or you're using it the wrong way or you're perceiving it the wrong way. At any rate, it ain't working, folks. You know, that's why the prison is filled with your children. That's why the unemployment line is filled with your children. That's why in the streets of Africa, the smartest we have is standing by the road selling some Chinese knockoff for a few cents just to get enough food to eat that evening. In a country that's producing gold and diamond and platinum and cobalt and being sent away to the rest of the world and your children walk around with their raggedy behinds hanging out of pants that they got from some used clothes crap that was sent into the country and a disgrace towards us. I'm just saying, let's be real. You know, if you got what you say you got, make it work. You know, if the Yoruba is supposed to be what Yoruba is supposed to be, why is the Fulani killing and slaughtering um, the people in Yoruba land every day? Something wrong with the game, folks, and it's the way you're looking at the game. This is about understanding cosmology, ecology, and the human experience, the relationship between the three. And until you get back to making your spirituality your reality, you're going to be a slave to somebody else who has made their spirituality their reality. 
we go in our church and sing and shout and have a good time, pass out. Other people go in there and plot how to take all the money you got and all the land you got and all the raw materials you got. And, and then say amen at the end of that discussion when they come up with a plan. And we talk about how great we can sing, how what great singers we produce, how we got more rhythm than anybody else. Does that do anything for you? you know? Let's deal with reality. If you want to understand your ancestry, you got to understand history. Because each one of us represents the best of our ancestors, the latest version, and the most high-tech model. But as long as it's ill in form of the past, it almost comes to, to be useless for anything except to be a clone of your enemy. And trying to rationalize, well, you know, I got to make a living. So if I got to sell drugs to some black folks, yo, man, that's what it is. That's what's up. And then on the other side of your mouth, you talk about how somebody's oppressing you. Well, the somebody that's oppressing you is you oppressing yourself in the name of the only avenue you know and the only history you know, because you don't know yourself and you don't know your history. Have no respect for your ancestors. Some of us have learned to pour libations. We don't even know why we do it. Even if they call them Dr. Clark's name, Dr. Ben's name, that ain't your ancestry. Call your mama name and your daddy name and your grandparents name. And then ask why you call them. Who were they? What would they tell you to do under the circumstances you currently find yourself? You know? Why are we crying? Oh, well, they don't teach our history in school. But yet we are not joining the, the, the PTAs. You're not joining the school boards. We're not running the schools. That's built from our tax money. And to make us feel absolved from that, we say it's their school. No, it's your damn school. Why aren't you out there running it? Why haven't you taken responsibility for it? Here you got a school in a black community in one of the blackest community in America called Brooklyn. And it's run by a bunch of white people that tell you, I won't teach your children shit about themselves and there's nothing you can do about it. So I know you're not coming to the PTA meeting. I know you're not gonna join the school board. I know you're not gonna run for election in the school board to get me out of here and change the rules. I know you're not gonna take over city council with your conscious people so you can change the laws. How in the hell can a school system that's 100% black have somebody running that system saying, I'm not gonna teach your history to your children. That is pure insanity. And yet the people who are suffering from that insanity is running around talking about their, their spiritual. The only spirit you got is the spirit of the enemy getting the job well done by you. He don't have to do anything except get in his car and go back to the suburb after he does all he can to destroy the brain and the psyche of your child in school all day. So that you'll never become a competitor to their children. No, spirituality is your being in charge of and responsible for your reality. Otherwise, everything else is just comic book. That. I don't want to sound so morbid, but we have so separated mm -hmm. ourselves from reality. Three, that, that beautiful little baby you got is three. You're going to send him to school for the murderers to butcher again? You know, you mm -hmm. have to organize some people in your community. Let's say we all going to be at the PTA on Monday night. Or, mm -hmm. you know, run one of us for the school board. Because we got to vote. So our community is schools, 99 to 100% of your kids. You have to teach the majority community who's trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Practice like racism against you. Have no respect for you. Won't even teach your children their history. And you hand your baby over just like. That's crazy. It's absolute insanity. It yeah. comes from ignorance. Ignorance of who you are ignorance of who your ancestors are because the other part of that spiritual understanding is you are the ancestors with your mother and father when they gave birth to you gave birth to themselves and your mother and father when they were given birth to by your four grandparents they were given birth to themselves are you not the ancestors 
<laughs> you're the best of their genes, the latest version, and the highest tech model, but you're the same person. You're just going to add two now. But to add two, you got to have a knowledge of them so you know what should appropriately be added to. I hope I'm making this simple enough. Oh, definitely. At all. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. People be talking about Yemma John. I'm Yemma John. is doing this. We're going down by the river like we do every year in Brooklyn. And we're going to take flowers for Yemma John. I don't have a freaking clue what they're doing. No disrespect. 90%. I'll say 95%. I don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to do something. And those who are leading them, who know better, just lead them into this myth that by going to some water and throwing some flowers in, wearing some clothes and dancing, is going to fundamentally change anything. It is not going to change nothing. Unless you understand that Yamaja means the nurturer, the mother, and then you behave as a nurturer and a mother towards your children and your community and dramatically change it. Then you're Yamaja. I don't even go to that water every damn day wearing white. With all the flowers you want, ain't nothing going to happen. Because it's just a symbol of a set of attributes that you should have. And they chose the water because even our ancestors know all life began on this planet in the water. And so they chose that part of the water because all of the water is in Yamaja. Only that part of the water that is penetrated by the sunlight where photosynthesis take place. Okay? That's Ra. You understand? Penetrating his wife. She's the mother and he's the father. In some cultures, in some it's reverse, where the earth becomes the man instead of the woman. And then the sky forces become the female. But the process is the same. See, in ancient Egypt, it's the Geb is the earth and Nut is the sky. And Geb is laying there as a man with his penis erected, and Newt is hanging over her, her vagina showing and her breast showing, with her arms touching the ground on this side of the universe and her legs on that side of the universe. But if you go to Ghana, they'll say a sasaya, and they'll say the earth is the female, and the sky is the, is, 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 the, is the male that penetrates it. But if we understand what our ancestors are trying to say when we talk about Yamaja, we talk about that part of the water that can be penetrated by sunlight, where life can be born. That part of the water where photosynthesis don't take place, that's all Lokun. That's the father. There's a lot of science in our mythology, but our mythology was a method of teaching concepts, ideas, and principles. But we get the teaching tool confused with what was being taught. And that's one of the ways why we've gotten lost. But it didn't happen accidentally. The enemy cut you off from that body of information called your history. And so you had no way to measure your present with your, with your past. So how can you then recreate a future? Except on his terms. And that one always has you at the bottom. No matter how much PhDs we got, how many trillions we make, we're still at the bottom. You got to ask yourself why. Because you don't know who you are relative to who everything and everybody else is. But when you learn who you are, then you'll do for self, create for self. You'll do the Nguza Saba that we hear about when we think of quantum, you know, and the seven principles. Dr. Salanga and the members of us who created that holy day, holy week for us out of fragments of Africa that had commonality to be practiced every week in the African-American community. And you'll see how you grow. You'll see mm -hmm. how you grow from that knowledge. Mm -hmm. you know? Definitely, definitely. And so that's it. When we're talking spirituality, let's get away from the spookality. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the real science so we can understand what we're doing 
Brother Rich, I remember like you and I, we were supposed to do something a couple of months ago. I know you got a little annoyed with me. I thought I was supposed to <laughs> my friend Little Bob, smack him upside his head. <laughs> um, um, and I wanted to push you. I said, when I first met you, I like this young guy. And Brother Rock, I think, brought me by your house. Mm, yeah, yeah. I didn't a little, but my father and I used to call Coco Loco. I said, what's going on with this boy? <laughs> said, Let me give him some time out there in the forest. Because he looked like a good father. I love brothers who can be good fathers. Because that, that, to me, I, I used to let my children nurse my breast when their mama would know me at my hospital. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, I love children, love my children. And I like to see brothers love their children. Once you have that love, you, you can die for that. Yeah. Make sure they have what they need. And what do they need? Food, clothing, shelter, safety, security. Mm. How do you get that? Controlling economic, politics, mm. and culture. What do you do with that? You get control of the land, labor, and resources where you live. Mm. You can't separate that from your spirituality. Mm. And that is what? Your reality. What mm. your spirituality does is tell you how to do that best. Mm. You know, spirituality is that body of knowledge that you learn from the past that tells you how to get control of the economics. You know, how to manage the politics so it manages your economics for you. How to reconstruct your culture so it gives you the ethics needed to be a leader in your community and a good example. You know, spirituality includes everything that you do. You can't even separate spirituality and culture. It's woven like a piece of cloth, like a kinti cloth with the different colors. You know, and that's where spirituality is woven into the culture. Culture is everything you do, what you eat, what you wear, mm. how you walk, where you walk, what you say, what you sing. Everything that affects your life on a daily basis that you've interpreted and found a way to use it to your advantage is called your culture. Mm. That's why it can protect you from genocide when you're on mm. top of it. So, yes, we could talk in detail about OBI, the root ladies of the South, Black people in South Carolina, North Carolina, they call themselves root ladies. What did that mean? Because they used the bushes, they used the roots, they used the plants, they used the leaves to make the medicine. Because we didn't have no doctors when we came out of slavery, or even when we were in slavery. All right? We had no doctors from the Western perspective, but we had brought our African doctors with us, with a herbalist. A herbalist is a physician or a nurse. They knew how to fix the medicine, pick the medicine, boil the medicine, you know, age the medicine, and then apply it to you when you needed them to sit. And yet this society disdained them and made it think that if you go to a root woman, you're going to poison somebody. Well, if that was that good, we'd have poisoned their asses. <laughs> That's not what root medicine is about. Root was the organic medicine of the African men and women, priests and priestesses, physicians who came over here doing slavery and practiced that medicine uh, among us. And even today, throughout the South, especially the Gullah Geechee Corridor, from North Carolina down to Florida, we still have those people practicing that medicine till this day. Because mm -hmm. you know? they understood very quickly, spirituality is your reality. So you we in America now, we don't have the same things we had in Africa. So we got to master this ecology as quickly as we can. We got to learn these faunas as quickly as we can. You know what I'm saying? We got to find out what, what has the healing quality. You know, they found an old bitter weed called collard greens. Mm. But it gave us the iron we need to work in the fields every day. Mm. You know? And they took the corn and they created something called harmony grits. <laughs> you know? Grits. That's right. Grits from ground up corn. Mm -hmm. you know? But it gave us um, the carbo that we needed to work in those fields. And then the rice. We brought the rice over here. Sister had a soda up in their little aprons and things. People think of rice, you think automatically of the, the East. Mm -hmm. East Asia. But yet the rice that made America rich long before tobacco 
or cotton was an African rice. And Africa has three, three rices, two wetland rice and one dry land rice. Do you ever hear anybody talk about African rice? The closest they've gotten is Dr. Benz or, mm -hmm. or Carolina rice, mm -hmm. you know. But no, the rice, but because it was so essential to America, made us rich, they didn't want to give that an African identity. So they made you think of rice only as Asia. It's mm -hmm. like Alexa Hente when they talk about coffee. Coffee was invented in Ethiopia, mm. okay? And, and some of the best coffee in the world comes up out of Uganda. And one of its main customer is Maxwell House. But you never see a commercial that show you African coffee growers or harvesters. No, yeah, no, no, no. So somebody is playing with your sacred science, using psychology to bamboozle you, mm -hmm. and keep you from a knowledge and an understanding of yourself and your history and your achievements in that history. So spirituality is managing your reality. You know, you want to find God, strip butt naked and go stand in the damn mirror. I guarantee you. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Then have a conversation with who you see in the mirror. Tell them what you love about it, about it or her, and tell them what you don't love about it. And what you don't love about them, tell them how you're going to change it. Because nobody can make that change but you. you know? If you're looking for something to come from outside that's already inside, even the word education itself means to bring something from inside out. Okay. They make you think education is going to school and they're putting something in. That's why it doesn't work for our kids, you know? Because you, you, you go to school not to get educated. You go to school to get tools. And then you use the tools to bring the thing inside, that intuitive spiritual power inside out, which will tell you how to reconstruct your personality, your society, your community, et cetera in an appropriate manner that allows for harmony and peace and love to exist. And that's why the Africans came up with the concept of Mahat, truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance, and reciprocity. Indeed. No other culture has a concept like that. But all over Africa, you find that concept in play. In the Yoruba, they call it Iowa Pile, which means harmony and balance. You know, um, in the Igbo, they call it Omaneli, which means the harmony and balance inside, harmony and balance outside. It's the same culture all over Africa. Don't get confused by the different names that language brings to the table. But what they're describing is how we should live in nature and in cosmology and how we should learn from cosmology. Our ancestors, in order to make the solar calendar, they had to study skies for 10,000 years, at least twice, so they could see the replication. In order to make the um, lunar calendar, they had to study the, the sky at least every month for a few months to see the replication. In order to make the 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 the, the um, I said the first one should have been the stellar, then the last one is the solar to study the movement of the sun. And in order mm -hmm. to get the movement of the sun, you had to do that for twelve months. Mm -hmm. you know, so they did these things, and there's another one, the the, the great year, but they had to study for twenty five thousand years, at least twice to see the replication. So you're talking about fifty thousand years of observing phenomena and see that it is repeating repeating itself. And then you line those things up. What is the human being doing when the sun is here, the moon is here, the stars is here, the constellation is here, and the planet is here? You line that, those things up. That is a scientific understanding and body of knowledge that you use to interpret what is happening and what is probably going to happen to you in your lifetime. And to your earth, 
I know I can plant this seed at this time of the year and it will grow. I can plant this seed at this time of the year. I can plant this seed in this kind of season. I can plant this seed and that, that had to be observed and studied. When you put all of that together, that's what spirituality is. It's science. It's your relationship to the rest of nature and your relationship to cosmology. Cosmology, ecology, and the human experience. We can try to mystify it and keep ourselves lost in the darkness of mystery because we want to have power over a few people who are ignorant. So we, we spook up everything and everybody's thinking, well, there's something spooky behind curtain number one. So I'm going to just wait here for the next hundred years and see if it comes out. Or you can show people how to see that there is no curtain there. And if there's one there, pull it down and let them see reality. You know, I said something, um, Rich, that made a bunch of brothers a little upset with me a few times in the last year. Every young black man, if I had my brothers, they would join the American military the day after graduating high school. You said if you had your what? My brothers mean my way. Okay. Every young black man, when he hits 18 and got out of high school, he'd have to join the American military for at least two years. That sounds super crazy, Elder. Why That's... would it sound crazy? I served for two, four years. Did it kill me? My father was one of the most militant men I know and got me in the movement. He served in two theaters of War Pacific and France. My uncle, who gave me my first gun and showed me how to protect myself in the South, he fought in Germany. My brother mm -hmm. fought in, in, in Korea. And he came back home, became a black leader in Connecticut, in New Haven, and a businessman that raised up his community. So what is supposed to happen to me if I go into the American military? Mm -hmm. Would I lose my mind in a greater than the mind that killed 8,000 of their brothers and sisters in the streets of America in 2020? Mm -hmm. 8,635 to be close to exact. Mm -hmm. And the year before was 7,000 or something. The year before was 6,000. Would my mind be any worse than that? Mm -hmm. And the brothers, I know some brothers and parties, well, we could train them. Why haven't you? Why do we have bloods and the crips and the this and the that instead of having the pan Africanist nationalist revolutionary protective guard for the black community, not the murderers of the black community. It says you can't train them. I know one place where they can get that training, but they'd rather have the Ku Klux Klan get the training and own the guns. They'd rather have the Klan and the white citizen council and the proud boys go in the military and become the cops in their community so they can cry on how racist the cop is. You want to get rid of racism and police violence in your community, you become the cop. And one of the path, the quickest path to becoming a cop is going in the military. But we don't want to really become the cop because that's a responsibility too big for many of us that are punk fells to handle protecting in the black community from the harm that can come from any outside or inside source. You know, you got, people got to come with a better answer than that to me. Our people served in this military from the beginning of the time. When Black Wall Street was being attacked, you know who was defending it? The African Blood Brotherhood. Almost all of them served in the First World War. Most people don't even know there was a, a group called the African Blood Brotherhood, let alone that they were all soldiers who served in the First World War. Born right here in New York migrated out to, to Tulsa. We don't even know we fought back and that we won the battle. We still crying, oh, they came and destroyed Black Wall Street, they could destroy Greenwood. In the end, when they dropped the bombs from the sky, the gasoline bombs from the sky, is we had defeated them on the ground. We defeated them on the ground. We defeated the Klan. We defeated the police. We defeated their militia. So the only course they could have was to go up in the air in those planes and drop those gasoline bombs on our house and created a firestorm. And guess what? After that, we built Black Wall Street back. I never heard nobody talk about that. We actually built it back better and more prosperous than it was before it was burnt down in 1927. You know what killed it? What? Integration. Mm. Integration. Mm. where our mind got so stupid that we thought white folks' groceries taste better than black folks' groceries. White folks' cleaners are better than black folks' cleaners. 
and we decide to spend our money with our enemy instead of keeping investing our money with ourselves. History will take away the mystery. You know? And then, brother, if you use your history to study your sacred science and take away the mystery, then you can work your black magic. Because you ain't got no black magic to work if you don't know yourself. You can't know yourself unless you know your history. That little tidbit I just gave about Black Wall Street, how many persons have you ever heard talk about that? Mm, very few. Very yeah. few. So I've got a citation from uh, long before this president and this group went out there last year. I got a citation um, from the city council in Oklahoma and a citation from the state of Oklahoma because I've been going out there for decades and celebrating in mind until my knee got too bad, I couldn't walk. And the brothers wanted me to come out last year, but no, I didn't want to be a part of that show, that farce they were putting on, so I didn't go. I may go this coming spring, this coming May. Mm -hmm. But we've got to study history so we can get rid of that mystery. It's like people make us think that Marcus Garvey somehow was in some kind of opposition to Booker T. Washington. There's nothing farther from the truth. Those men were brothers and best of friends. Booker T. invited Marcus Garvey to come to this country. And Marcus wanted to come and teach at Tuskegee. And Booker told him, no, with your kind of ideas, they'll kill you before the sunset tomorrow morning. You got to go to the Northeast with that. Booker had as much power in New York as he had in Alabama. Booker T. Washington was the black nationalist movement. Everything we call black nationalism today is what Booker T. Washington was doing. So how come we have relegated him to a dark closet somewhere? But Tony Martin will tell you in his writing, God bless Tony's soul, that Mr. Garvey said, I came to America to implement the Tuskegee model. So how come we don't get that? How come we don't hear that from our scholars? You know? Mm -hmm. How come we haven't gone to the Schomburg to read the letters between Booker and Mr. Garvey that they wrote to one another for years? Booker T. Washington III was a part of my organization, the OAAU, after Malcolm was killed. I read those letters before they went to the Schomburg. So you see, when you don't know history, then you're clouded in a mystery and you can't work any kind of magic. You know? So history gets rid of the mystery and allow you to work your black magic because it gives you the experience of your ancestors to the best degree you can get it so you can learn from the past to make your present appropriate enough to build the future you want for your children and grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's spirituality. Spirituality is being in control of and fully participant in your reality with the knowledge of your ancestors as your guide. You, know, you can create any ritual around it, any kind of dance motif or dress motif, that's cool. Those are teaching tools. But it's the ideas, concepts, and principles that they're teaching you to understand. You know? So I could deal with the history piece all day on what we're missing, you know? You ever heard of a brother named Chief Sam? No, who's that? This was the Ghanaian brothers who got three ships and came over to America and took some of us back home to Africa, all right, mm. before the end of slavery. Mm. But nobody, we over here, we don't know his name. We've never heard of Chief Sam. No, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. History will erase the mystery. The mm. people won't say they sold us. Yeah, some of our brothers screwed up and sold us, just like some of them sell dope to us today, right here in the streets of America. But we don't blame all of Black Americans for the ones, the dope dealers, do we? Mm -hmm. There were thousands more chiefs who took their armies and went up against these invaders. And many of them won many great battles. And a lot of this history, they still have in preservation for us when we come. That's how I got involved in Ghana, because one of the chiefs said, it's time you all come home and take responsibility for your ancestors who died in defense of you're not going into slavery. Mm -hmm. And I've been to the houses in the northern part of Ghana 
where they have the only doors on the roof, no windows, just little slots to shoot their arrows out of. And the, the, the gate into the courtyard was only two feet tall. You had to crawl to get in. So if any enemy tried to get in there, whack, go to old head before they can get through the door. Yeah. I'll be, I had to do all of that, brother. You know? But we don't know that history, you know? Uh, the graves, when they killed the Arab slave chaser, and they buried his horse and him and his sword and everything in the ground and made that a shrine in their ritualistic way to keep that demon away. And they'll mm -hmm. show you nothing left of the bride is not except the metal parts and the swords, you know, and, and the metal braces around the case. But these are sacred places because that's where they want sacred victories against our dire enemies. Mm -hmm. Know your history, get rid of the devil's mystery, mm -hmm. and you can do your black magic. Then it'll work. Mm -hmm. I know God. When I see you, I see God. Now, is the God, how developed the God is, is depending on how much knowledge you have of your past. Because mm. it really comes down to remembering. And remember what the word means, re, to do over, member parts. So if you remembering, that means you're putting something that's scattered, what? Back in the again, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what history is about, it's about remembering. When you study history, it triggers memory. It ain't written no place except in your mind. That's part of your spirituality, sacred science. Trigger thing and wake things up. Bad experience and good ones. But then right. you learn to navigate them by knowing what to throw in the junk pile and get rid of, and what to retain to keep you growing. Mm -hmm. And family is the foundation of civilization. Family is the African image of a God. Not a man, not a woman, not a child. No Heru ain't God over nothing. Um, a set isn't God by herself or a star. No, Heru, a star, and a set is a symbol of what God is, and that is the African family. Man, woman, child. Mm -hmm. That is the symbol of God. And that's what we constantly try to replicate because that is the organization that is we replicate from family, from nuclear family into extended family, into neighborhoods, into community and into nations operating around a central principle and understanding based on certain ethics, morals, and concepts that leads us to have a Maatian environment, you know, place of balance and harmony. Now you don't get no better said than that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do the Reverend Hoop and Holler thing, just get the Lord, I'm down here in trouble, Lord, calling mm -hmm. on your name. And you're looking right past God. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to call on God's name, go on him and say, Rich, what's up? Mm -hmm. How come you ain't providing no food, clothes, shelter for your wife and your children? How come you ain't taking care of your grandma and grandpa with the love? How come you ain't going to check on Auntie who had some surgery the other day? Have you been in touch with your brother? Have you all lost connection? Have you tried to make friends with your neighbor? Have you tried to create a common way where we can get a common knowledge, try to look back together? That's the spirituality that allow you to practice a Pan-Africanism that nobody can rock and create a nationalism. And a nationalism, as Malcolm X said, is to own the land, labor, and resources where you live. Mm -hmm. and to be in control of the economic politics and culture. Now, if you tell me that you can do those things without having them hook up to your spirituality as your spirituality, then I'll follow you tomorrow, hmm. wherever you go. The beauty of it is that the center core of it is a love for the world to make it a better place every day. And think about what I said about the brothers going in the army. Because right now, the only one that's getting all that good training with all this good weapon is the Proud Boys and their folks. And we ain't ready to go up against them. You know, it's all these dudes on the police department. Every ethnic group in the world is carrying a gun in your, your community and you standing on the corner picking your, your fingernails. 
And if a brother bump into you, you're going to blow his head off. Mm. But all the mother folks that's in there running your community, killing you at will, locking you up for crimes you didn't commit, putting you into a situation where you become criminalized and following the third, 13th Amendment, once you get a felony, you lose your right as a citizen and become a slave again. That's the law in America. And that's why they treat you like a slave because legally you are a slave according to the Constitution and the 13th Amendment. The minute you've been felonized, so you can't get a job as a policeman. You can't get a civil service job. You can't stay in public houses. And a whole, you can't vote. So you understand that you are deliberately being arrested and felonized and criminalized because it removes you as a functional citizen in your mm -hmm. community yeah. and you can't even vote to save yourself. Even if you didn't have a gun and if you had one and don't know how to use it, what we're we doing now because we're shooting up our innocent people. So don't anybody dare tell me. I served in the military, didn't change me. I was in the movement before I went in, continued in the movement while I was in there and returned to the movement the day my foot hit the ground. I went to Malcolm X's organization and joined up. Signed, brother, up, I'm here, ready for duty. Months later, I was with Stokely Carmichael, 125th seat, picket in the draft office. And most of the brothers I know who was in the military came back home and were activists in their communities. So we need to think and study history. We'll find that many of the people we adore in the 60s served in the American military. They came back home to be leaders of the black community. Except they know how to use a gun. They didn't shoot the baby in the carriage or the sister getting out of the cab coming home from work. I saw some young brother that didn't do nothing more than scuff your sneakers accidentally. So we better wake up and face reality. Other people come in this country and know how to use it. And if you don't want to be a part of it, all you got to do is go to the airport, buy a ticket, and say, bye. Get the hell out of my way. If me and my people built this, I ain't leaving it. I got a home in Africa. I got a business in Africa. I go home and do my business as I please. This is my home, too. We built this in blood. I ain't giving it to nobody. People come and tell me, why do you want to be an African-American? Why are you here? You know, there's always folks who have immigrated here asking me that question. Why are you then here? Asking the person who built it and who fought to change the rules and made, made the privileges that allow you to be here. Why are you here asking me why I'm here? With the name I have. Where did you come from? Where did you get your name? But no, because we don't know history, we don't know how to answer those questions. America is a geopolitical place. Africa is a race. There's no contradiction combining the two. Especially when you live here, work here, vote here, eat here. Raise your children here, educate them here, and you can talk with you, not an American. What planet are you from? That's why your spirituality is messed up because it ain't your reality. Your spirituality must be your reality. And the tools of spirituality, which is rituals and shrines and, 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 and music and dance, those are tools of spirituality. Those, none of those things find themselves or even combine the spirituality. Spirituality, my brothers and sisters, is your day by day, hour by hour reality when it is comprehended by your total involvement in it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that can only happen in a functionally positive way if you know your history. Your history is nothing but the conversation you are having with your ancestry. Say that again. History is the conversation you're having with your ancestry. Who's telling you what's up? Hmm. This is what was going down before you got here. So now you take the knowledge I got from that and you work it into your present. That's when you get some magic. But if you don't have that knowledge, knowledge to mix in the bowl of your mind and your spirit and your soul, you ain't nothing but a slave. Playing games by growing natural hair and wearing some African cloth. Just a slave. 
in black face. Indeed. Okay. I want to I want to get to some questions uh real quick, Elder. Yes, I want to get some questions. Yes, yeah. Uh before we get to some questions, I want to put your cash app in the chat for those who would like to support. Let me uh write this down. Where's it? You sent it to me, okay? Uh for those who would like to support the elder. I'm about to put his cash app. Uh, give me a second, family. Uh, yeah, for those who would like to support the elder, I just uh, Dr. James Small. Yeah. yeah, I just posted his cash app up there. You know, for those who would like to support the elder, I appreciate the brother. Um, I'm listening. Y'all like, Rich in a trance. I see uh, y'all fools in the chat. Y'all ain't listening. Y'all busy writing. Y'all ain't listening. What, what, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm listening to the brother. Deep thought, you know, deep, just deep listening, man. But um, I appreciate you for um, coming through and speaking. You know, I just wanted to hear what you say. I didn't want to interrupt you at all, Elder. I yeah, think I, was, I appreciate that. I think yeah. it was very important for you to get that out. The way you got it out, it was such a a fluid uh talk that you gave just now you know you didn't need anybody to cut you off when you when you when you're in the flow state like that elder so i appreciate you and um you know i don't know about that army shit though i'm gonna tell you that but i i, I love everything <laughs> Remember, you can leave it to the proud boys and they'll come home the best trained soldiers in the world and they're gonna kick your ass okay because you ain't trained to shoot your way out of a tenement house and if you did shoot your way out, you don't know how to be an organized military instrument to organize your community to meet that organized mm. military instrument. They're real. They just showed you that last year down in Washington, D.C. They ain't scared enough to try to overthrow their damn government. This this is right? this, this is healthy conversation we need to have in the community. So I, I definitely oh, appreciate it. I'll, I'll be trying to go out there. Yeah. I'll be, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be packing my pet when I go because I know we got some crazy folks who ain't going to like what I got to say. Mm. got to protect myself. If that's the American military, my grandpa. Indeed, indeed. You know, I know how to do that. My birthday present is 16 with a 22 rifle pump at. And at um, 17, my grandmother gave me the gift of a life, a two-shot Derringer that I could take to school every day. Because mm. they yeah. understand what I had to go to get back home to them white communities. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question before I get to it and put some questions in the chat. All right, put some questions in the chat because I'm gonna get to a few questions before we get out of here. But let me ask you, um, you know, to, you, you mentioned Haiti and how they defeated uh, you know, America and these different uh these different countries. When 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 I'm at war with somebody, you know, we talk about as above, so below, and I, I, I go to war and I got my you know, my ancestors with me. This person goes to war, whoever their ancestors are, are, you know, they're with them. Just like we're battling in the physical, is there an ancestral war going on with my folks versus your folks? Is it happening on another plane? Is there another war taking place simultaneously? That sounds cute and good. Mm -hmm. But you are your ancestry and this is the plane. Mm, right here. Right here. Right here. Shit's got to go down right here. Right here. We ain't ready for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you remember I said, mama and daddy gave birth to you. Who did they give birth to themselves? Mm -hmm. Granny gave birth to them. Who did they give birth to themselves? Great granny mm -hmm. gave birth to them. Who did they give birth to but themselves? And you, your little boy you got there, mm -hmm. he is the, the, the last tip of that speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And each one of us should improve upon that gene line. Mm -hmm. That's the ancestral genes latest version and you should become the highest tech model okay the war okay. the spiritual war is the war we in right now uh -huh. i can look at you and know i love you because you are me mm -hmm. the, the yoruba is called that look me mm -hmm. you belong to me and i belong to you mm -hmm. when we know that i can never hurt you because i'll never hurt me let's get to a couple of questions brother um I just seen some. Uh, 
What do I tell my mother-in-law who thinks divination is evil? Well, if you tell her the truth, most divination we're trying to do now is evil, so I won't tell her nothing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, let, me, let, me, let me back up. So let's deal with the divination. What is divination? Divining what? What are we divining? All divination has to do is starting to have a conversation with the divine. That's all it is. You know, trying to see if you can, based on the body of knowledge you have about the person, yourself, about your history, about your culture, trying to figure out what's next. Now, in other cultures, they simply call it meditation. They don't go into divination. They call it meditation for the most part, but we don't see it as the same because somebody changed the word. What we call in divination, they do it in churches every week. But we've taken divination to a very negative position. And that's probably why our people don't understand it. We make things so complicated and so confusing, it is hard to explain it to anybody. To explain, you have to first know exactly what divination is, what it does and what it means. And I, I, I guarantee you, if you explain it well, they'll get it and find the parallel uh, correlation in their religious tradition uh, where that exists. People tell you, well, we ain't with all this ancestor stuff. Well, everybody in the Bible is dead, last I heard. Everybody in the Quran was dead, last I heard. Everybody in the Torah was dead, last I heard. So they've been ancestral worshiping from the day they picked up any of those religions. But you've got to be informed of your history and your understanding. Like I got some people use predicting science, another thing we want to call divination. You can say predicting science. I would I use curry shells or or um, the, the thing that you eat. Um, trying to predict something, but you're not doing it out of the darkness, out of the blue. You have some knowledge um, before you do that. You have some knowledge of the people you're doing it for, and you have knowledge of the world, you have experience in the world. So you have a pretty good idea. I can tell anybody that walks up to me, I have a pretty good idea who that person is, male or female, no matter what the race. Give me five minutes to them and I can read them. I don't have to have any particular knowledge or background. I've been doing it all my life. Divination, maybe you just need to change the words mm. to explain. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes these words we have, which the European gave to what we do, turns our own people off because they don't know these things anymore. They've been century with the body of knowledge cut off from them. And you have to find a way to not confront them with it, but to let them know you're learning how to walk back to something that they've been cut off from understanding. We've been cut off from our history. All you need is one generation to not know a language or not know a history, and it's lost. Except in our subconscious. And if you have no way to communicate with anybody else, by the next generation, it's really lost deeper in our subconscious. So I would tell my mother-in-law, nothing. Practice who you are. Let them see who you are. Don't try to sell anything to anybody that don't want to hear it. Be who you are. And if they have a question, then you give them an explanation. Otherwise, be who you are. Don't expect nobody to love it or care that you're doing it. And stop doing who they are if it is not who you are. You know, that's the simplest answer I can give to that. Okay. Uh, didn't Africans believe in life after death or reincarnation? Okay, again, those are other people's terms, but Africans believe that there is no ending nor any beginning. That is, there's a constant, um, what's the word? Um, the, um, I know I've been doing, this is my third Zoom today, so my mind is kind of wide. <laughs> take your time, Elder, take your time. Uh, take your time, brother. Uh, Ogun concept. Yes. You know, transformation that when we, in many of the cultures, they say when you die, you 
they have rituals like in the Yoruba, if someone is about to die, the important people in the family would gather around the bed and they would either write notes and put it in his clothing or they would whisper to him what to tell the ancestors when he gets there to a room and tell them what we need down here. Um, if they send you back, send you back with these skills and these abilities. If they're sending somebody else back, tell them we need this, this, and this. So we definitely believe that death was not an ending of anything. It was like a re reincarnation, a regeneration, a process. And they said, you go to this place called Arun, and then the ancestors will like do a shakedown on you to see, did you do what we sent you down there to do? Did you fulfill your destiny that you promised you were going to fulfill? Um, what things did you do? And that determines how many times you go and come. Because they had a whole concept, but I forgot what it's called. But it says you come and go until you complete those steps. And when you complete the steps, you become a part of the greater universe again. And you didn't have to come back anymore. But you didn't die. Your life didn't end. You're part of that process that gives life and sustain life. Because there can be no alpha and there can be no omega. That's a Christian concept. In the Africans, life is a loop and it's constant. I am every cell of my mother and my father. And they were every cell of those people who were born 10 million years before. So how can I die? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... The reason I didn't call it reincarnation out like that, because some people think like, Okay, you can come back as a frog, as a tree, or as a plant, or a snake, or fish. The African is not talking about that. The African is saying, you are the continuum of a life that didn't even end when the people you call your parents died. It is not going to end when you dissolve back into the minerals. You're made up of, of earth. You're dirt, fire, and water. And that's what we are. And the minerals we get from the plants and stuff we eat on the earth and the animals who eat the plants and the fish who live off the plant and the water and the water that we drink from the earth and the sunlight, those three things make us up. Well, at some point, we wear out like a tie on a car. And that energy that this body house just recycle itself, create another house or find another house that's already being created. But there's multiple ways of the, how they look at that. But all African society deals with the fact that death is not um, an end, that life is eternal. They just have different, um, what's the word? You're in different phases going through a cycle. That's like a loop. It's nonstop. Indeed. I've always been on Earth in some form or another. Mm. And when this body wears out, this energy that I've created called me, who we call the soul sometimes, the spirit sometimes. You know, in ancient Egypt, they called they dealt with the ka and the ba and the kut. So they were talking about the same thing we're talking about. We're talking about body, mind, soul, spirit. Well, all of these are different energies. Like around me now, you can't see it, but there's a light replica of me. There's multiple light replicas of all of us. All of us, every minute of every day, is giving off um, radiation and light. It has different colors. Some people call it your aura. Sometimes people can see them. Some people are very spiritually, but we go spiritually deep. They're different colors. The different color tells the degree of development of your consciousness, meaning what behavioral practice have you been doing in the earth that allow you to be harmoniously aligned with the other elements and forces? But see, that kind of knowledge, that's not general public knowledge. That's the kind of thing if somebody commits themselves to want to learn and then people start teaching it to you, who, who, if that's something that you really want to learn to be priest or priestess, otherwise people run out in the world with a tiny little piece of knowledge and they don't have a clue what you really said to them. But in short, we believe in Africa, we know that life is never ending. And you can't have really 
and end or beginning. So if he says, when did the universe begin? Then what did it begin out of? Something had to exist before that. Or when did that begin? That had to come out of something that existed before that. Even if he said, well, it came from nothingness, nothingness then having had to be somethingness in order to produce something. So the African is very clear. We don't know any time when existence didn't exist. Matter of fact, they kind of wrote it that way in the pyramid text, you know, where Amun says, I came into existence so that existing might exist. And when I realized that I was existing, I realized that my art was at my side. So in the very beginning of things, the feminine concept is aligned with the masculine concept, and the feminine concept is representative of balance and harmony in nature. And so we state that in the very beginning of time. And in the end of the dissertation in the pyramid text, this is older than all of the Bibles, and even it's older than the Book of the Coming Forth. Um, in the pyramid text, it states very clearly at the end of the dissertation that Amun who becomes Ra, and at one point becomes Ptah, states that, but I originated from my mother, which is water, what they call Nun. So it's science. It's the science of nature and the science of the universe as our ancestors studied it and tried to explain it to ourselves. But what we've done is tried to Christianize everything African. Hmm. So that's even when we got on the rituals and the bead and the clothes and speaking some of the language, nothing changed, because we've put it in a Christian vessel and think it's gonna come out African. Well, I can tell you right now, it's not. It's not gonna come out African. Mm -hmm. Let me get to the next question. Uh, Elder, speak on voodoo and voodoo and its connection to, through our culture. But there's no difference between voodoo and voodoo. And just different people from different places pronouncing a word. The word comes out of the Ewe and the Fon language, and it originated in the Ewe language. That's the people who live in Togo and eastern part of Ghana, who arrived there from Nigeria, along with another group of people who call themselves Gaz, who live in Ghana today. And they arrived in Nigeria from the tree from the Nile Valley. And the Yorubas is a part of those same people. And that word, the only language I found it in, is in the Fon language of the people of Benin and in the Ewe language. And it simply means the essence of the divine in things. To say the essence of the divine in the human, you say Voodoo Gatsi. You want to say the essence of the divine in nature, you say Voodoo Daha. Mm. So the word literally means the essence of the divine in things or the presence of the essence of the divine. And so what are those essence? Those are the things we call loas, you know, the, which is the forces and powers in nature and forces and powers that's capable of being developed in the human personalities. Um, the forces and powers that come from our knowledge of cosmology, the energy Every second of the day, we're being bombarded with energy from what we call outer space. Mm. And so the ancestors is able to recognize and harness some of these energies. And they use the bebes to configure what this, what particular energy group they're talking about. So a leg bar would have one, um, configuration of Papa, Papa with Ligba would have another, or I should have said issue first and then Papa Ligba, or um, as a Danto would have another Bebe. But those Bebe represent energy configurations as discerned by our ancestors coming from the rest of the cosmology and ecology. And that bombards us every day and lives in the environment that we live in as those configured arranged energy arrangements. But how do we develop them? And that's where rituals come in and the music and the dancing and the drum rhythms and, and, and whatever herbal uh, sense we use to try and develop 
a, a mental environment that will allow us to capture the strength of that energy and utilize it in the way the Haitians did with the energy of Ezra Dantelli during the revolution, because that was the force that led the revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what does subconscious mind have to, I guess they're trying, have to do with magic and imagining white light? They kind of mis misspelled things, so I think that's what they're asking. Well, some of that stuff is too Eurocentric for me. I can't get into that. But like I said, magic is very simple. If you don't know your history, you can forget about talking about magic. What magic? Well, what do you think about the subconscious mind then? We have a subconscious mind and we have a conscious mind. One informs the, the other. But again, you go, you have to you got to deal with the body of knowledge out of the past that people have already demonstrated to be workable in order to then make your presence give you the ability to create a future that, that's appropriate for you. But just doing things, because if we had all this magic, why are we in prison all over the world? Don't sound like our magic works very well, the way we are describing magic. <coughs> the way we are describing magic today. Does it, is it working? I don't want none of it because it doesn't work. I want the knowledge that gives me the advantage and the opportunity to build the kind of world I want to find myself in. To work with those people in Africa and the Caribbean and the United States and Canada to rebuild the African world the way we want to see it. And that requires having a knowledge, a working knowledge of your past. You can't be ignorant of your history and talk about African magic, because you ain't talking about African, you're talking about European magic. You're not talking about African magic. And it isn't something that's just gonna pop up out of your subconscious without any stimulation. You know, Something's gotta stimulate it. Something's gotta grow it. And there are people who say that they're witches and they're priests and they're priestess and all of this thing, then why don't they go to work on behalf of the race? And stop talking. Go to work on behalf of the race and let us see you take, do just do the job that the Christians did in the South during the civil rights movement. They worked more magic than we've shown trying to use any African format. Of course, they were using a very African format if you watch what they did. Matter of fact, that movement was one of the most African movements we had in America. And most of them had never worn an African cloth or had an African name and didn't wear Afros. Well, speaking of the Christians, the next question is, do you think organized Christianity has done more harm than good? In some ways, in some ways it did extraordinary good because that's the only weapon we had, you know? We weren't allowed to practice in the open in the African tradition. And we suffered when we did. So we had to find a place to keep our African essence together. And the only place we had was the church. That was the only sanctuary we were allowed to have. Most of us did not join the church until after slavery. And after slavery was over, the only place the white dominant society would allow us to practice any kind of um, sanctuariness was in that church. So we took our Africanness in our church. The black churches are not the same for the most part as the white Christian churches. We're becoming more of that because we're forgetting so much of what we had when we went into that church, what we put in there, what we hid in there. The church was that in the oldest days, the 1800s, it was the African village. It's no longer that because we don't know African history anymore. We don't even know Africa if it slapped us in the face. And Africa is all over the black church. Even when the people in the church deny it, that has nothing to do with reality. If you study African history, you'll recognize the African essence and the African nature of certain things that go on in the church. So in one way, with the symbols of God and all of the ancient holy people being white, that has been psychologically damaging to our people. Much of the stuff in the Bible is right up out of Africa. 
It's just a European misinterpretation of some of it, and some of it is not misinterpreted at all. But most of us who go to church have never read a Bible. We don't study the Bible. Even though we go to catechism classes in schools, they give you a few things they want you to know. But to sit down and read the Bible and study it, how many persons, any of us know, have done that? People have their favorite verse, their favorite book they'll read to give themselves psychological strength and stuff. But let's be real. We know we know less about Christianity than we know about African culture, and we know nothing about African culture. Mm -hmm. And that's the answer to that, because that's the truth. Indeed, indeed. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Y'all don't have a lot of questions in here, I see. That means you know? they were listening real well. <laughs> I don't know about it that either. They uh writing a lot, got a lot of comments, but uh let me see if I can scroll up and uh well read some of those comments and I can respond to some of them. Where is the best places to purchase land to develop our communities for self-sustenance? Right where you're at. Here we are living in black communities, 100% black, and we talk about going to develop a community someplace. That don't make much sense to me. What we have to learn how to do is how to organize what we already have. Now, if you want to say, well, I don't want to be in the urban environment to do this, um, I don't remember who the group is, but I remember Brother Charles Barron of New York, if you can get in touch with him, they bought something like 400 acres of land in Georgia somewhere, and they're trying to develop that. I know there's other groups in Mississippi and them trying to do that. But we've made a fundamental mistake of not thinking for ourselves in the way we look at building communities. So I remember when the Nation of Islam was talking about give us 11 states. Greg wasn't going to give you no 11 states. The Republic of New Africa was going to give us 11 states in the South. You crazy. You know, they won't even let people fight each other in Europe. They take whole armies over there and declare world wars. And you think they're going to give you their country. But you didn't have to ask them to give you. All we had to do is move there and become the majority. So can we organize ourselves in such a manner that we can pick a state or two or three or four where we want to be the majority and pack up our bags. But first, we got to serve there and survey in front of where we can buy the land and get the homes and stuff and just move and take over those states. There are southern states now where black folks border on the majority. But whites are still ruling them because we don't have an African concept of how to build a personality, let alone a family or a community, because we want to have this without paying the price of learning history. And that means you ain't, ain't nothing going to happen. You can even go buy land. It ain't going to work. Because mm -hmm. your white people, white people in black face and African clothes don't even work in Africa. And it's certainly not going to work here. But black folks in the South, the majority of African-Americans at least have moved back to the South. But we're not organized. We just spend almost two trillion dollars, but it wasn't aggregated because we caught up in the white concept of the I, I, me, me. You know, it's all about me. And until we can come together around an understanding of what Pan Africanism means, what nationalism means, what family means, what developing a ma, ma using ma'at, because our ancestors left that, a ma'atian character as the standard for me measuring our ethical, moral behavior and find a way to come together in unity. We don't have any tools, but we are rejecting Kwanzaa, which is one of the most beautiful tools. And it's not a new tool. They use it all over Africa. They don't call it Kwanzaa, but they use those principles. Dr. Malana and us gave us a beautiful organized way to look at it. Why don't we just put that in place in our lives seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, and we'll organize ourselves and realize we already have black nations all over America. But you can't say I have a black nation if you got a 
community of 99% black. All of the stores are run by Arab. All of the dry cleaners is run by Koreans. All of the, 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 the wash west is run by Chinese. All of the major supermarkets is run by Europeans or Latinos who think they're Europeans. All of the, the garages is run by another group of Europeans. All of the people who come in to do the plumbing in your house is Europeans. Well, no, you can't. How are you going to have a community like that? And where are you going to go and buy land without having people with the skills to build that? So we need to look, what do we need to have a community? To provide food, clothing, and shelter for ourselves. We don't have to move nowhere to do that. We have to change how we think. And we have to say, all those kids on the on, on the corner, um, rich that you don't want to go in the army, then teach them how to be plumbers. Teach them how to be carpenters. Teach them how to be brick masons. Teach them how to be roofers. Teach them how to be electricians that can wire a house. Teach them how to be mechanics. And you got your community. If you're not going to do that, you better send them to that white man where they can get that teaching for free. <laughs> and don't get me up with me because it works. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't come up with a way to make it work. We had until a few decades ago all of those things. But we allow ourselves to be bamboozled into integration. And we abandon the black economic structure to join the white economic structure. And we died. And when our nice boy, oh, Mr. Billy, what's his name, Clinton, um, came up with a set of laws to criminalize our whole race while his wife was calling us super predators. And Joe Biden wrote those laws that put more people in slavery in, 10, I mean, in prison in 10 years that was in slavery at the end of the Civil War. Yeah. Somebody, uh, somebody says, how does Baba Smalls feel about Tariq Nasheed speak ill of Africans and Caribbeans? Tariq Nasheed is, shouldn't be held to any no greater standards than anybody else in the community. Tariq Nasheed, um, why well, pick Tariq? He's doing the best he can with the consciousness he's got. Go do the best you can with the consciousness you've got. See, if I can condemn him because he's lacking in that area, am I to throw out all of the great works that he's given us in Hidden Colors? You know, we pick the wrong things and the wrong people to go after. I can understand why he's angry. I can understand why he's angry with the way our brothers who have immigrated in the last century have treated us and sided with white Americans and stay away from us and form their own communities. I can understand that. So I'm not going to kill him. He needs to take a better view of it. But he's not alone in that. A lot of African Americans, we're not deaf, blind, and die and blind. We know we're being abused. We just don't abuse people the way other people abuse us. Our thing is we turn that abuse on ourselves. And that's the sadness. Because if our brothers and sisters from abroad were coming here and banding with us like other white and Asian and Latino communities do with their people who are already here. We rule America today. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, uh, if we don't create us meaning having kids, can we still come back or reincarnate? Life never ends. It is eternal. If you don't create kids, say if you don't have, if you mean like someone don't have a baby of their own, or maybe someone biologically can't have children, um, you, you can affect the genes in another human being by simply loving them, caring for them, sharing with them, and you can transform those genes as though they came out of your own belly. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Okay, let's uh shout to King Simon in the chat. What is the meaning of a dream catcher? Yes, the wrong person. I don't know how to catch any <laughs> dreams. I need to catch a few because I've been having some <laughs> real strange ones lately. I need King Simon or somebody to read that for me. Um I have the same dreams. 
put the same house in the same location for the last few months. Mm. You know? And, um, you know, dreams, some of it is like what's happening to your body while you're sleeping. And your body's trying to interpret what that pain is or that ache is or that stress is that's on your body, the way you're laying, the way you're sleeping, or the sounds you might be hearing. Mm-hmm. Dreams are also contain some of the last things you did that evening before you went to bed or any traumatic things that might have happened positively or negatively traumatic on you um, before you went to bed. But dreams can also be memories, ancestral memories. But dreams can also be your mind synthesizing what has been going on with your life, especially in a particular area, and trying to find answers for it. But remember, the dream can only use the symbols you have experienced and the faces that you've experienced and know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's multiple things that's happening with in you when you go into dreams. But I'm not very good at dream interpretation. Mm-hmm. Let's get to uh, two more questions for the brother. I um I seen King Simon um, wrote his cash app down. I pinned it to the top. Hopefully I've seen somebody said they couldn't see it. Uh, let me just share this on the screen. If you would like to donate to the elder, his cash app is Dr. James small dollar sign dr james small spread some financial love like the brother king simon said to the good to the good professor all right let's get to two more questions y'all what's the best options for felons with no resources in america that wants to create financial freedom and build a legacy with no support Read that again. What's the best options for felons Mm -hmm. with no resources in America that wants, I guess he's saying to create. Oh, I got it. I'm ready. Financial freedom and build a legacy with no support. Well, you have support. You just have to find them. Because if you went to any other country in the world and they don't even know that you're a felon, what would be the tools that you would be using? How would you support yourself? How would you do your food clothing shelter there? Because at the bottom line, it's food clothing shelter. You can't do that. You ain't been on but a problem. So how would you do it anywhere else? See, um, I know some brothers down in North Carolina who went to jail. They used to be stick up artists. They used to stick up the drug dealers on the freeways, you know, up and down the road. So they'd Stick them up. It's the same to do sticking up the, the drug dealers go to prison and the dealers still running up and down the freeway. That's another story. But but a lot of those brothers down there say, okay, what area can we go into when we come home? You know, especially with the little money we got and get together collectively. And some of them got together collectively and started buying land and created a real estate business. And then the next thing they were able to do is get got together with others and created um, uh, uh, an alternative school where people paid to send their children to this alternative black school. But again, there are places where we need to create apprenticeship because you may have a felon, but that don't stop you from becoming a plumber. That don't stop you from going to a college. There's still many colleges out there and that don't stop you from going to a trade school. There's all kinds of... Um, uh, financial assistance and aid that they can give to you and nobody there, they'd be breaking the law and you could take them to task if they kept you from getting those financial aids and assistance to go to the trade school, the tech schools, or even to college if you want to. Because I had a lot of students of my students who came straight out of Rikers Island, you know, but we have to want to do this. Yes, they're going to try to stop you. You can't become a policeman. You can't take a civil service exam. You can't work at the post office. But there's other jobs that you can do in your community. You have to decide, do I have a love great enough for myself that extends to my community? So I would find, I would think it's, it's more important for me to learn how to be a plumber or a carpenter than for me to rob my neighbor. 
and be real about it because we are making decisions. And so we have to be real. Yes, I'm a felon. So there's a bunch of things that this society is not going to let me do. They're not going to let me vote. Okay. Then I'll work with the people, political campaign, who I think is the people we want in office. I can't vote, but that's not going to stop me from learning how the system works and working with them. Okay. I can't get the job as the policeman, but I'm going to find a way to keep a monitor and a tap on those policemen in my community. And I'm going to find out how I, a felon, can get an education or get an apprenticeship working with a carpenter or a plumber or a painter or somebody. And if it takes having to join a church to do that, um, let me be very frank. The church ain't no worse enemy than staying in America. Okay. So we got to make sure we don't be playing ourselves out of pocket. I did it when I was young too. I was too vicious. And too anti too many things when I was younger. I wish I hadn't have done that. Because the church served Black people very well. We probably wouldn't have survived America if it wasn't for our ability to use the church. But the church wasn't using us. We was using it. And young people have to get back to how we use this thing. It's an organization there that's available for us. You don't want to go to the one on the corner, form one of your own. It only takes a few dollars to get an incorporation. Form one of your own. And, and call your people together and then get in there and use it. Raise money, get a building, open a school. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of things you have to decide. I want to do this and I don't want to do this, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we have to be clear that there's some things we're not going to do anymore. I can't lie to you and tell you I've never committed a crime. I just never got caught when I was younger. A couple of them would have me still locked up right now, <laughs> you mm. know what I'm but I didn't get caught. Other people got caught. Mm. And so, but we can, beat, we can beat that. We have to come together and say, okay, they got me here. I can't turn this corner. And what corner can I turn? Because this is at the fundamental level is about how do I provide food, clothing, shelter, safety for me and my family? That means I've got to have a tool or something I can sell. I have to have a skill. How do I go about getting that skill in the community I'm in? You know, where can I get the skill that's needed so I can do food, clothing, and shelter? Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of business who don't use that's the felon thing. You don't have to tell certain people who won't use that against you. But you can't use that against you to keep you from carrying out the efforts it takes to transform your life. You know, and that's what you have to do. Come up with how we can open businesses of our own. But you can't do that spending your money that you do have with the people in your community to exploit you. If we would just hold back our money for two months, most of these businesses would go out of business in our community and sell us the business for cheap. But we can't discipline a large enough group for a long enough period to drive them out of our community so we can take over those buildings and and develop those businesses ourselves. But these are the things you gotta organize around. These are the things you gotta talk about and not the Super Bowl and not this or that. You have to sit down and seriously say, okay, how are we gonna do this? And we know what we have to do. A bunch of other people in our community selling us goods and services and we are buying it. Then we have to stop buying it and set up the one business in our community come together collectively and set up the one business in our community, the one grocery store that we all gonna go to. But therein lies the problem. How many of us are saying, we're gonna go to that grocery store because that is ours? And how many of us will open a grocery store and give our people the respect due, the prices due, the quality due? And until we can get there, we have a big problem. But the way you get there is you get there in yourself first. And don't measure yourself by nobody else. Well, he ain't doing this and that one ain't doing it. No, how can I be the best African that I can be, the best community person, the best father, the best husband? I don't care who else ain't being the best. Let me be the light then, let me be the example. Let me be the agent of change in this community I'm in. 
And we just have to give up some bad habits and money, spending our money to our enemy. And we'll change this thing overnight. Let's get to one last question. Um, uh, what is your take on how the Bible instructs women to submit to their husbands? Can you share some insight into the natural order of the household, gender roles, etc.? Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm please tell, don't be playing, sister. How many of y'all really <laughs> submit to your husband <laughs> to be, <laughs> be playing? I'm, I, most of my life, I've been doing the submitting. Oh you shit! Know? <laughs> I know what the Bible says. How many people even pay attention to that stuff? Oh, and ain't shit. nobody stupid enough to try to enforce that stuff on the women, especially the women of today. Because y'all ain't going for it. You didn't go for it in the past. You ain't going for it now. I know nobody could tell me my mother was, was submitting to my father. They were good friends. Or grandma was submitting to grandpa. Shoot. One time I saw her pull a shotgun on him and drove him out the house for two weeks. He had to go my great grandma. Oh, so I don't know whether that had really been real for black folks. Maybe, and I don't think white folks may play that I'm submitting to my husband thing. But I, for the majority of black folks, I don't think that really hold. I think black women and black men never stop being Africans. Um, even though the Christian church was the sanctuary we had, we didn't do white Christian stuff in our church for the most part. We did black African things that we disguise in the Christian church for the most part. And so we need to study history. I tell people, read Leron Bennett, Shaping of Black America. Read Leron Bennett, um, um, Before the Mayflower, um, who else? There's a book called, um, it's called Slave Testimonies. And I forgot who that's by. Um, read the autobiography of Dr. B or the biography of Dr. Betty Shabazz. You know, you will see that things aren't as crazy as you think it was. It has gotten crazy since this integration thing. That's the biggest trick bag we've put in and been put in since we came to America. And that was Brown versus the board. It was one of the biggest crime against the African mind and this integration trap. Oh, uh, the other book is The Crisis of the Negro Intellectual by um, Dr. Harold Cruz and separate, plural but, e plural but equal by Dr. Harold Cruz, you know? And, and W.B. Du Bois' um, book on the color line. I think those books will inform you that black folks didn't die as Africans. We've done more dying as Africans in the last 40 years than we did in the 300 years prior. You know? Indeed. And, um, we have more African retentions than you know, but you're not gonna know unless you study African history. You know, mm -hmm. Study the history of the Yoruba, mm -hmm. study history of Ghana, study the history of Africa in general, and you begin to realize then read, you know, um, like Jomo Kenyatta's um, Mount Kenya, read Things Fall on the, Falls Apart, um, forgot the Nigerian author, um, read uh, Culture and African Politics by Kwame Nketsia. And what you'll see that if you want to see what you lost or you didn't lose, study African history and you'll be shocked at the things you do that you think are white things that you're doing, but they're African things that white people are doing. Mm. Deep, deep. Wow. Hey, Elder, once again, I appreciate you for coming on yes, the show. Rich. I appreciate you for coming on the show, Elder. I, this one, I, I definitely look forward to watching this one again tonight. I'm, I'm you know, I'm gonna replay it, watch it again. A lot of gems dropped in this one, Elder. Um, anything you got coming up or anything you want people to know about before we get out of here? Well, then reach out to the Happy uh, Talk group. Um, happy Films Group. We've got a conference that we're going to be doing in um, Kemet. Um, most of the group's going to go up on the 19th that to the that. 28th, I think. Um, but the conference is going to be in Kemet in Aswan from the 25th. It's going to be on the 25th and the 26th. And part of the tour is going to be visiting the, the digs of Brother um, Anthony Browder. And visiting the museum and many of the artifacts he found is, is on presentation in the museum in Luxor, um, as well as you know, visiting the pyramids and the tombs and so forth. 
So that's going on. And and I think they're full now. They have um, can't take any more people on the trip. But you can um, get in touch with happyfilms.com or, or Happy One Africa. Any one of those will lead you to the to the thing where you could pay to watch the conference online. And and the people that's going to be at the conference is Dr. Theophila Banger from Congo Brazzaville, who was the partner of Sheikh Antadia, um, Brother Tony Browder, uh, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Dr. Roslyn Jeffries. Dr. Wade Nobles, Dr. Vera Nobles, um, Brother Infidishi, um, Brother um, Asar out of uh, Houston, um, Sister King, I think it's get, I forgot her first name, but Dr. King, um, and it's about three others. It's going to be an extraordinary conference, and myself, of course, is included. So um, go to the happy talk and find a way to get in touch with that conference. I think you'll enjoy it. The other stuff I'm gonna be doing is gonna be down in Houston. I'll be doing something in Houston with the Happy Group in March. I think that's gonna be the 19th and 20th in March. And then I'll be in Vegas on the 25th and 26th. Um, but I'll, all of these, if you go to professorsmallafricanworld.com, most of this information will be there probably after tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, what is your um, somebody? I just seen something. Uh, oh, somebody um, wrote. How can they contact you for business? Yeah, that's what I'm here. Uh, for business. Yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind giving my number. My number is all out there. Anyway, it's all over the internet. So, <laughs> okay. um, it's a uh, nine one four nine six zero two six. Nine three, nine one four nine six zero two six nine three. So you can reach me there, or you can text me there. You can call me, <coughs> or you can leave a message at professorsmallafricanworld.com. Indeed, indeed. Hey, Elder man, thanks a lot. Yes. It, it, right, took, it, it, it took a while. It took a while, to but I'm little glad little you're little. here. Huh? Give my love to that little man. You know. I definitely will. All right, um, I, I look forward to having you on it probably next month. You think you come back next month? You're probably at the end of the month because March okay. is already getting filled. So let's talk next week and so we can close it in. I got you, Elder. Hey, thank you for everybody for tuning in. Brother Rich, Professor James Small, and we get out of here, family. Peace. Yes, yes.